This is the day the Lord's made, and we're going to rejoice because we have a choice. Praise the Lord, and all that is within us, bless his holy name. New seasons, times, revelations, and impartations. You know, I have to maintain an area of a level of thirst and hunger. You must maintain a level of denying yourself. In this time and season that we're in, there's a special area of place for each and every one that God has a stream, a flow of things that he wants to impart in us. What he's trying to do is begin to remove false resources and impart the true resources. Because there's too many people connected to false resources. Is everybody with me? Amen. Praise God. Revelation 18. Let's grow for it. Revelation 18. Oh, yeah. We're going to start at verse 1. Is everybody there? It's the last book in the Bible. Then there's other ones, but they're just, you can't see them. That's why it's called Revelation. It brings you into another arena afterwards. <laughs> After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority. And the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven and have be, have, and God has remembered her iniquities. One of the greatest sins that reach heaven, in fact, the word says to cause a child to stumble, it'd be better to put a millstone around your neck. To cause a child to stumble. Just keep that in mind. Verse 6, Re render to her just as she rendered to you and repay her double according to her works in the cup which she has mixed, mixed double for her. In the measure that <clears throat> she glorified herself and lived luxuriously in the same measure, give her torment and sorrow. For she... Um, says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. So again, there's two connections. There's an area of a queen involved and an area of child abuse. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord God who judges her. The kings of the earth <clears throat> who committed fornication and lived luxury with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth will weep, mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore. 
merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, and scarlet, every kind of cintron and wood and every kind of object of ivory and every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze and iron and marble and cinnamon and incense and frank, uh, frank or, uh, franken oil and frankincense and fragrant oil, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and cha chariots and, bo and, and bodies and souls of men. The fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you, and all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you. You shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city, that great city, that great city called Vatican, that was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every shipment, every shipmaster, all who travel by ships, sailors, and as many as trade on the sea, stood at a distance and cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What is like this great city? They threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth, for in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy prophets, <clears throat> holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus, with violence, the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found anymore. Why would a, throw, a stone be thrown into the sea? Because water would overtake it. The sound of harpets, harpists and musicians and flutists and timbers, or, uh, timbers and uh, trumpeters and all kinds of music shall not be heard in, any, in her anymore, nor craftsmen or any craft shall be found in you anymore. And the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you anymore. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore. In other words, there used to be a light there. And the voice of a bridegroom and the bride shall not be heard in you anymore because it used to be associated with it. Not anymore. For your merchants were the great men of the earth. For by your sorcery, all the nations were deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and of all who were slain on the earth. Babylon is associated with a world system of corruption and trading and banking. They were extortionists. They were into distribution and bribers. This is known as the city of Vatican. It's associated with Rome. All roads lead back to Rome. This is brought up today because of the area of exposing false resources. False resources. Breaking these powers off so that we may be connected only with one true source and his resources. Amen? He's saying come out from these false resources. You know, the word talks about in those times I'll have a form of godliness but deny the power. Again, I am not talking about individuals that are just connected with Catholicism because there are many sweet people who are deceived. God knows the hearts of men. But the Vatican itself is probably the, one of the, is the, the most corrupt city in the world. And it has a betrayal of Christ himself or men exalt men. That's not what God promoted where their priests wear robes of darkness and their fornication and pedophile 
is beyond measure. This is known as the Vatican. And it is global. It's spread through the world. They are changing their ways these days. Many people are coming out of it. Many of us have come out of it. I know I came out of it. And in this time, there are so many false resources. And this is one of the major leading ones. They are the banking system of the world. People have no idea that the Vatican is what holds the banking system. They are on their own cities. They are their own government. No one has. They are on their own property. It is not associated with any organization in the world but its own. Just like Washington. Same thing. Two places. That's why they're both so corrupt. And they promote one another. In Luke 21... Every false resource will promote bondage. Luke 21. Oh, hallelujah. Remember, we are in a time of cleansing. This is a cleansing time. And in, in, in this time and season... It's not only a cleansing time, it's an exposing time. Remember, judgment is, begins in the house of God. And so because judgment can, begins in the house of God, judgment is essential because judgment, if people cooperate with God's judgment, they will escape his wrath. Amen? But without co cooperating with God's judgment, you will not escape his wrath. And this is why it's happening, because this is going, a, this is a global arena. This is a global transition. This is a global effect. It's in a global judgment. Again, so many people misinterpret judgment. They're expecting all kinds of destructions and whatever. I'm not saying that things can't come to that arena, because what we're seeing right now is a time of earthquakes, famines, volcanoes. Look at how many people are evacuating Hawaii. There are active volcanoes globally all over the world. There are tsunamis that are happening. There's earthquakes and flooding. I mean, we are, in, in this time right now, there are more than the, you can, in the last few years, there are more in these few years than there has been in history. They're just calculating more and more and more. It's just building up more and more and more. Why? Because God is trying to get people's attention to get cut loose and break the roots of false resources in our lives. In Luke 21 and verse 7, let's speak it. So they asked Jesus saying, Teacher, what, um, but when will these things be and what will the sign will there be when these things are about to take place? And, and Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one do what? Deceive you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am a Christian, or I am he. And, and the time has drawn near, therefore, do not go after them. When you hear of wars, are there wars? And commotions, do not be terrified for these things must come to pass first, but the end will not come immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation. Nation is associated with ethnic group. In other words, there'll be a very large increase of bigotry. And kingdom against kingdom. And there'll be great earthquakes in various places. Again, we talked about large amount of earthquakes and famines and pestilence, and there will be fearful signs and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay, your, lay hands on you. And they will what? Persecute you. 
delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. But it will turn out for your, as an occasion for what? A testimony. Therefore, settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand or what you are to answer. For I'll give you a mouth and wisdom which are for your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends. And they'll put some of you to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But not a hair of your head will be lost. For by your patience possess your souls. In other words, your endurance. You will need endurance. Why? Because they're going to become even more and more false resources. Promoting bigotry. Promoting in, coming from the political arena. Coming from the governmental arena. All kinds of places. These are associated with false resources. And bringing people into bondage. In 1 John chapter 5. In verse 18, is everybody okay? The Lord will begin to expose areas in your life where there are false resources. They are like swamps. In other words, they're not a fresh spring. God's resources are fresh springs. Everything else is a swamp. In verse 18, let's speak it. We know that whoever is born of God does not what? Sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. Keeps himself from what? From false resources. Keeps himself. So if you keep yourself from false resources, you know what? The enemy can't touch you. And that's what it says right here. And the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God and, un, and the whole world lies under the sway of the what? Wicked one. So in other words, the world is under deception. It's ruled by deception. It's ruled by fear. It's ruled by lust. It's ruled by money. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true, in his Son and in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from what? Idols, deceptive desires, false resources. False resources. Anybody ever meet an attorney that was a false resource? Amen. They're called public pretenders. Amen. Hallelujah. The enemy sways an individual. He influences an individual. How does he do it? He gets them to drink from a false resource. First Timothy chapter 4. You know, you heard the saying, man, what you been drinking when somebody does something stupid? They're always pertaining to something alcoholic or whatever. But even alcohol is a false resource, isn't it? <laughs> People be drinking from the swamp. <laughs> they become swamp creatures. Verse 1, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. <laughs> now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter time some will depart from the faith. Well, how are they going to depart from the faith? It says it. Taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons called false resources. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Seared from what? The truth. 
forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to re be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Resources, false resources, they promote the gay agenda. They promote abortion. These are all false resources. Again, it's coming from even the political and governmental and rulers. It's coming from all, it's coming from colleges. Man, those are some of the biggest false resources. Education, books, TV, the media, social media. I mean, you can Google anything. And think that it's true. You know, many times people will Google something that when they feel sick, the next thing they know, they got 15 other diseases. And then fear comes on them. And God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, has he? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. So these false resources, again, are the media and so forth. And I mean, and there are places that do good things. The Shriners, they do good things. But behind closed doors is the satanic occult. Does everybody get it? Amen. Man, they show the TV programs on TV with all these kids all twisted up and all stuffed with cancer and they're taking care of them and they got this Shriner dude with his hat on and he's holding this kid and I'm like, well, yeah, what do they do afterwards? In other words... For you and I, we must go beyond and know the sources of things that promote what's going on. Because many people are drinking from the false resource. Many. Having all kinds of belief systems. Spending more time drinking out of these resources instead of drinking out of the presence of God. And that's what the word says, always learning, 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 and never come to the knowledge of truth which sets them free. You know? Oh, hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 2. What have you been drinking from? Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 1, first three verses. What does it say? Let's speak it. Therefore, my son, be what? Oh, Second Peter, sorry. Therefore, my son, get on the right page. <laughs> Hallelujah. Beloved, but, <laughs> but there were also what? False prophets among the people, even as there were be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves what? Swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words for a long time. Their judgment has not, has been, not been idle and their destruction does not what? Slumber. Wow. They, these false resources are promoted by divination and familiar spirits that sway and mislead individuals, causing a disconnect to the truth and the presence of God. Again, they have a form of godliness, but they deny his power of truth in presence. In John chapter 8, every false resource is a temporary one. And it promotes temporary to everyone else. John chapter 8 and verse 42. 
And what happens is the Holy Spirit begins to bring to your remembrance things that we have connected with in false resources so they can be disconnected. Because people still don't even know they're still drinking from these false resources. In verse 42, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, and nor have I come of myself, but he who sent me. Why do not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a what? A murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own, his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. That's why nobody's listening to the Democratic Party. The Libertarian Party. And if they are, it's because they're not God's. They're not the Lord's. Does everybody get it? Why? Because those are major false resources. He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. They are not of God. Why? Because they don't promote the things that are of God. Listen, a true resource of God will promote the things that please him. Amen? A false resource will promote things that displease him. It's real simple. He, the devil has his own, reset, his own resources. <laughs> and he's established multiple places of resources globally. It's all over the world. Not just one location. And John 16. False resources. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody there? Let's speak it together. Verse 5. I am, the, oh, hallelujah. I am turning my page. <laughs> but now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. When he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. And of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Why was he judged? Because he's a false resource. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them. However, when he... The spirit of truth, who is known as the Holy Spirit, has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. In other words, he is the source of truth. Amen. He will glorify me and he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. And therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. This is so profound. The Holy Spirit is your connection to the true source. Not a resource. To the true source. Does everybody get it? The Holy Spirit is your connection to the true source. Now, the Bible is a resource. Amen? There may be books of testimony which are resources. 
but there are true resources that lead me and you to the true source. Everything else in this realm is a resource except for the king, his spirit, known as the Holy Spirit. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are the true sources because they are truth. And when, that's why so many people are neglecting the communication and the connection with the Holy Spirit. Because only He is your connection to the source and the true source. Everything else is a resource. Amen? 1 Corinthians 15. That everything in the Bible is always going to lead you to the source. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Don't be what? Don't be deceived. Don't be stupid. Amen. Don't be misled. Evil company does what? Corrupts good habits. Why? Where did evil company, what's its source? It's a false resource. And anything that's filled with false resource, its source is Satan, his kingdom. He says, awaken to righteousness and don't what? Sin, because false resources always promote <laughs> sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to their what? Shame. I speak it to their what? Shame because they're drinking out of the wrong source. Does everybody understand that? Associations bring impartations. They're false resources from or what we call evil sources of Satan. Remember, Satan's foundation is deception and lies. The word says something, you will know them by their fruit. <laughs> the Bible is a true resource to the original source, Jesus the Christ. Third John. Remember the woman at the Jacob's well when Jesus was there. She went to go draw water, and Jesus said, man, that's, that's, a, that's a resource, but let me tell you the true source. He was standing right next. There was a resource, but it was a physical resource because water brings life. Amen? It maintains life in this realm. But he was talking about a true source of life, which not only brings life, but gives life. And that's him. And 3 John, is everybody there? In verse 2, let's speak it. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. That is your mind, your will, your emotions, your desires, your choices. As your soul prospers, your thoughts prosper. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. So he's expressing how it's important to convert the soul. The soul prospers by exposing and deactivating false resources, especially in memory. Remember, listen to this. Your, all sources, when we intake from any source whatsoever, it goes into your memory. There are two places of storage in you for memory. The first place of storage in you of memory is your old man. It is called carnal. Amen. All of your past life and your old man. That's all the places of, that's what's now in your flesh. And it carries all the memory of your past. 
All the false resources that we picked up is all in your flesh. It's all in your old man. And it hasn't, it's not removed. It can never be removed. It can only be replaced in where it's covered. The second place of, new, of memory is in your new man. So there's always that battle of your old man and new man. These are storages of memory. When you think about it, we live in a world that is established and exists in memory. Because if nobody can remember anything, nothing would be done. Amen? The problem is there's so much false resources that bring so much division because of their memory. Things that they've learned. They've learned. Why have somebody learned something? They took something from a, a resource and put it into storage. Now they're learning off of it. The problem is if it's false and they're still digging in and taking from the source and storage of false resources, which is false memories, they're going to constantly activate those things. So for me it's, uh, and you, it's our responsibility to constantly deactivate that. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Memory stay activated unless disconnected. They must be disconnected from their sources and then replaced with a true resources from the main source who is Christ Jesus. Amen. I always keep looking at all these, like, reservoirs, you know. These, some of them are swampy, clean. Yeah, and you, if you're thirsty, you don't want to go drink to some green swamp. The things are jumping out of. You, know. you want to drink out of something that's clear and refreshing. Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10. <laughs> False resources. Proverbs 10, verse 6. Let's speak it together, please. The wise in heart will... Receive Proverbs 10, verse 6. Blessings are on the head of the righteous. Dear goodness. But violence covers the what? Mouth of the wicked. The memory of the righteous is blessed. Thank God. But the name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart will receive commands, but a prating fool will what? Fall. He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. Again, righteousness is the fruit of the connection to the true source. Amen? Righteousness will always produce. That's the fruit of it. If it's from a true source of God. If righteousness is in there, then the person is drinking from the wrong place, man. 2 Corinthians 10. He's going to the wrong place to drink. That's why we're to go to Joel's place. 2 Corinthians 10. Oh, yes. Verse 4. Hallelujah. Are we ready? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or physical, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? 
A memory lie. Why is it a memory lie? Did it come from a true source or a false resource? False resource. And you see, I mean, look at, again, if people are drinking from these reservoirs of false resources, then it comes down. It gets passed down family lines. Look at the traditions of men that are passed down family lines. All kinds of things because they've turned something that is a lie and turned it into a truth, but it's really not a truth. It's a deception. But because they believe it, they've taken it and used it. And now it goes down the family line. And it becomes a stronghold in people's lives. Verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. So we must take authority. Now again, there's a strongholds of memory lie that has been st um, stored from a false resource. So it's been stored in you. It needs to be cut loose. In other words, covered over. It needs to be covered over with truth. You need to lock the key to all the false resources of your carnal life and throw it away. Lock it and throw it away. Don't ever go back and open it. 1 Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter six. You know, why do people when they go to a doctor and they sit and they get a diagnosis, they I'll get a second opinion. Because they're actually looking for another resource, believing that that first resource is false. Amen. Especially mechanics. Many people go from mechanic to mechanic to mechanic. And there's a lot of false ones out there. Let me tell you, they're false resources. I don't know where they get their information from, but it ain't God. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Now godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which draw, draw men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now, a root that's associated with a connection. Amen? So he says the root, the connection, is a false resource. So the love of money is connected to multiple false resources. Multiple. He says, but you, O man or a woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, and faith. Love, patience, and gentleness, and fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of on eternal life, to which you were also called, and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Powerful. Root is a is a connection to resources. Romans fifteen. Romans 15, 12. Is everybody there? Anybody there? Amen. Praise God. And again, Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he who is associated with Jesus shall... Rise to reign over Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. Now may the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing. And that you may be 
may bound, may be abound in hope and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we see here the connection because Jesse was King David's father. Amen. And from out of that lineage came Jesus. So he was expressing about the true root, the resource directed by God to come down the lineage of this family lineage that would produce Jesus Christ. He was the root. Is everybody all right? Amen. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2. All right, now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. Dear God, help me. For though I am absent in the flesh, and I am with you in the spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Verse 6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up. Where? Rooted and built up where? In him. And established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men. Why? Because they drink from the Wrong, false resources. According to the basic principles of the world, drinking from the false resources, and not according to the Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and power. Power. We are rooted in Christ as the source, the tree connected to the true source, and we expose, it's our responsibility to expose false resources in our life and to cut them loose. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to cut the roots of all false resources in our life. Amen? Amen. Go to Jude. In verse 8. Let's see if we can get this one right. <laughs> verse 8. <laughs> Let's speak it. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil whatever they do not know. Why do they speak of ever, whatever they do not know? Because they are drinking from the wrong false resources. And whatever they know naturally... Like brute beasts in these things, they, cor they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the air of Balaam for profit, and perish in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feasts, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars for whom is reserved the, darkness, the blackness of darkness forever. These were connected to false resources. Amen? Go to Luke uh, chapter 3. Luke 3. Oh, happy day. Luke 
Luke 3. Man, I ain't eating hot dogs no more for breakfast. Good source of protein? Snap. <laughs> Where did I say to go? <laughs> Got hot in here, didn't it? Luke 3. Luke 3, please. In verse 7. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. I think I'm more drunk than I thought I was. So I give her thinking. <laughs> Is everybody there? Amen. You sure? We're there. <laughs> <laughs> then he said, are we there? Amen. All right. Amen. Then he said that the multitudes that came out to be baptized by him, this is John the Baptist speaking, bro of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not begin to say to themselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to rise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the what? The axe is laid to the Root of the trees. What was he getting ready to do? Cut false resources. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Yes. So whose responsibility is to get to the root and cut off these false resources? Ours. I'm going to close at Psalm 1. Psalm 1, and we're going to start at verse 1. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> oh, to God be the glory. Oh, happy day. Everybody there? Amen. Let's speak this together, please. Verse 1, Psalm 1. Everyone say blessed. blessed. Okay, now I know you're right where you're supposed to be. That's good. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Okay. So is the counsel of the ungodly drinking from the false resource? Amen. Because he sure ain't drinking from the true resource. Nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, or in what we call the truth of God. And in it, he is, in his law, he does what? He meditates, he focuses on it, he puts it before him, because he constantly wants to drink forth from the true source of God Almighty. So that this truth is always before him. It's, now that gives you something to compare with. Amen? It says, very powerful, if you'll meditate and you'll do these day and night, you will be like a what? A tree planted by the what? River. A river of life. Rivers of living water, drinking from the true source of God Almighty that brings forth its fruit in its season. What fruit will it produce? Righteousness. Whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does will what? Prosper, because the resources of false resources have been cut from the root, and now you're drinking from the true resources of God, and it's converting your soul. You're no longer a man pleaser, you're a God pleaser. Every time the memory from the old tries to come up, it's shut down. It doesn't get an opportunity to speak in fact as soon as it opens its mouth you stuff it Amen. you don't let it speak 
and you remove anything from the new man of memory, you cut and break that loose. Amen? You can't remove the old, but you can remove the new. Does everybody get it? Amen. Now, verse 4. The ungodly are not so because they're rebellious. Rebellion is associated with witchcraft. Amen? Because witchcraft is a false resource. But are like the chaff which the wind drives away. When we're doing drugs and alcohol, we're involved in witchcraft. Somebody get it? Why? What's the promotion of witchcraft? Deception. Listen, you may take a pain pill to deceive you. Amen? Amen. But you ain't being healed. Amen? Amen. And then once you take that, it begins to disconnect you from reality of God's presence. It begins to bring stupor, brings dullness. And what happens is that it actually begins to work in reverse and makes the pain more sensitive because that's how it deceives people. It may start off okay, but then the end result is deception and more pain. Amen? Amen? Again, verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the reward. This is the judgment of reward. They will not stand in that. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly or rebellious shall what? Perish. Shall perish. And why? Because they are drinking from the false resources and not from the true resource that brings life. Amen? That's why Jesus is known as the tree of life. The other one is known as the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because even the knowledge of good and evil is a resource, a false resource, because it's associated with temporary. One is eternal. Amen. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask, Lord, that you continue to expose all of our false resources. That we may cut the roots of them and walk in truth, spirit, and in power and freedom in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Prepare your hearts for communion and you may bring up any tithes and offerings. <laughs>